All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone here for episode three of Cody's Cash Flow. Um, we're going to go ahead and today talk about disability ratings. I don't know if you guys caught the last episode, episode two, which was basically my budget breakdown for uh, making all the way up to a half million dollars in uh, net worth and then moving towards that seven figure net worth eventually. Um, I did break down the fact that I do get paid at a 100% PNT rate based on a number of disabilities to include my neck, my head, my lower back is pretty pinched. Um, I do have a sciatica. I do have multiple issues with my left leg as well as horrible, horrible migraines and OCD. So there, there's a lot of little things that all add up based on a single head injury that I got when I was a second lieutenant in Korea. So that's a, that's a wonderful little thing that we get to play. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll just talk about how I got my disability and I'll actually walk you through the process of how you can apply yourself to go ahead and get disability so that you don't have to rely on any of the VA representatives that might not necessarily help you, any of the scammers out there, there are a ton of them. I can't believe how many of their scammers are that just, just send us uh, $3,000 and we'll totally get you a disability, even though they can't do that. Only you can and only a VA accredited representative can. So don't, don't listen to any of the scammers out there. They, there's just too many of them and they'll just cost you too much money and too much time. And time's the more valuable thing here. And if you lose that time, that, that's one of those things that everyone should not ever lose. Like the whole point of getting more money is to buy more of your time back so that you have more time for your loved ones, your friends, any, anyone that actually matters in this world. And that you would be willing to spend your time on because it, it's that it's that valuable resource that you just never will get back. So we'll go ahead and we'll bump over here to my share screen. Now, what you're seeing here is the uh, VA.gov web page. It, it's a pretty pretty decent web page. I mean, it's pretty navigable. Navigatable. It's easy to find. It's just that most veterans don't know how to actually go through everything and find all the little individual buttons that they have to push. And that's what keeps veterans from filing disabilities as well as the fact that they think they don't deserve it. But the point of the matter is you do deserve it. You're, you served, you deserve it. Like <laughs> seriously, because you probably have all sorts of crazy injuries to include shoulder injuries based on the kit that we had to wear anywhere, both uh, on deployments, training rotations, overseas. I went to Korea, Europe multiple times, um, went to multiple uh, CTC rotations. In fact, I work at a CTC over in Germany now, a uh, combined training center. <clears throat> and um, the, the main things with that is the fact that Injuries happen, especially when you're training all the time. You don't have a whole lot of time off. You get very little sleep regularly. You uh, have multiple stressful events on a daily basis. You work anywhere from 16 to 18 hours a day. It's physically intensive, mentally intensive. And especially if you're a leader, like it's just extra intensive on you at all points in times. And that, that wears on your body. It definitely like completely drains any of the, your ability to do anything after work, which ends up to laziness, which ends up to you not being able to go out there and start a side hustle or start a business or think about any of those things that you need to do in order to make more money in the world so that you can go ahead and reinvest so you can buy your time back that you won't have during the active duty service. Now, saying all this, I'm grateful that I went active duty. I'm grateful that they paid for my college. I'm grateful that I came out of it with zero debt, a good paycheck, a good job. Granted, I would have rather had zero disability, but unfortunately, cards were not on the table for that. I got injured. I got hurt. I had to get out of the army. So it is what it is. 
Now, jumping over here again, you can see this is va.gov. This is the very first web page that you're going to go to generally if you're looking to get any sort of disability or check on your disability claims. Uh, this check your claims and appeal status will become your best friend because a lot of these VA disability claims, they take a long freaking time. Unless of course you have the proper medical evidence, you have a necessity to get it closed quickly. And that, that's only gonna be for most people 70 and up because they don't have a lot of time left and the VA tends to rush their cases. So that, that's something that you need to, need to focus on that. If you're a little bit older, you need the file for one. That's really easy. You can order your medical records from the National Archives. Get those medical records if they weren't destroyed in the 87 fire for the National Archives. Then you can take those medical records, go see a doctor, and go get it corroborated so that you can have that additional medical evidence you're going to need in order to file against the VA. And then once you're ready to file and you have all that medical evidence, you've talked to anyone that you might have served with, you might have known, might have known you while you were in the service, then you can go ahead and jump into actually filing a claim. Granted, there's one step that you can do in order to set a date while you're gathering all the information. You'll click file for cl file a claim for compensation. And then once you file the claim, it'll give you a date for the initial submission. And that, it's just a temporary hold. It's a date that says, within a year of this date of submission, I will have all the stuff I need for the VA to conduct my CMP exams, to take me, do all the evaluations, confirm the medical evidence, and make sure that I am telling the truth. And that, that's the biggest thing is like, you have to have utmost integrity when you're working with this VA thing. You can't lie to them because they have a special rating code that's basically doesn't call you a liar straight out, but it's like, yeah, they're, they're definitely, they don't have this injury. They're just trying to get extra money. So that, that's, that's one of those things that you just have to understand that if you have the injury and you can prove it medically, you need to file. You absolutely need to file if you served. File this get that money. Somebody else is going to get it anyway. You might as well be the one that pulls it off the printer. So don't be the one that just sits by and waits and thinks that somebody else deserves it. Somebody else did more, so they deserve it more. It's all money that the government's going to print anyway, so don't feel bad about it. Like, get your money back, because they're going to take it out of you in taxes anyway for your standard daily job. But for your disability, click on file a claim for compensation. That's the very first thing you're going to do once you have all your information or you're preparing to get all your information. Now, obviously, I don't have my CAC card, my CAC reader, <laughs> CAC card. <laughs> that was one of the things that we always used to get called on all the time. Um, I don't also have my uh, information readily available so that I could go ahead and walk you through this whole process, but it's, it's pretty easy. Basically, sign in, you start your application, it gives you that hard date, that basic file date. Then all you have to do is prepare, get all that medical evidence. The most important part of all your medical evidence is gonna be your nexus letter. That is the most important thing because it is a doctor saying that you are more likely than not and or likely to have had that injury caused by your service in the military service or by your service time during that period. Now, th this is the most important thing because if you don't have that medical evidence, it's like an instant disqualifier. They're just gonna throw it out. They're not even gonna look at it. They're just gonna say not service related, which is gonna be one of the categories that you'll get very aggravated seeing because although it definitely happened in the military, they'll just send you not service related because you don't have enough medical evidence that says, hey, dummy, I actually did this in the military. So that's why you have to get all that extra, all that extra evidence to prove the fact that you do actually have that disability. Now, 
The next thing that you can do to add a little bit of extra to your argument, but it's not nearly as strong as a nexus letter, is a buddy letter. And these are all the people that you might have served with. These are all the things that might have happened to you that other people saw. Could be a spouse, could be friends, could be anyone that you hung out with after work. If they saw like weird tendencies, like I know my OCD, like it's pretty bad. I'll pick at my skin. And that's one of the things that ended up getting put in my medical record is that I'm a skin picker. I can't help it. It's just like, if my skin is not fucking perfect, it's, it, it gets picked at <laughs> and it drives, it drives everyone around me nuts. It drives me nuts because I mean, I pick to the point where I bleed sometimes it's just, it's a mess, but, <clears throat> and it always happens during periods of stress. So you, it, it's just one of those things that you can't do anything about all caused by a wonderful little head injury. Like you never even know what could have caused it. But it's just, that's what I'm just saying. It's like these things that you did in the service caused secondary and tertiary effects to your everyday life. Like there's things that definitely impact my life every single day, especially when I get the migraines. That puts me out, just puts me out. 24 hours, no questions asked, dark room, no communication. And you don't think that affects my job and my daily work? Who boy. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee all of you out there can definitely do that. And we'll, we'll go a little bit deeper on some of these claims so that you guys can go ahead and file these claims as well, just to keep you from paying a ton of money to a whole lot of these scammers. Now, obviously you applied and this step three is the longest part. The VA takes forever to make a decision. Absolutely forever. It literally, the only people that even come close to how long the VA takes to make a decision is the members of Congress. <laughs> literally, and Congress might actually be faster than the VA because they actually have to make a decision at some point in time. But anyway, <laughs> you will be waiting forever unless you have the perfect medical evidence that can tell the members of the board that yeah, dummies, we have this disability. You cannot even imagine the disabilities that just get overturned because evidence wasn't provided correctly or the interpreter found it confusing or the nexus letter didn't read more likely than not or likely. Because the last thing you want is a less likely than not or not likely because that'll immediately disqualify you because... These are government employees. Government employees are lazy. Let's be perfectly honest. They are lazy. They're there for a second pension generally and or just want easy work. And they're not the best and brightest because the best and brightest are in industry making a crap ton of money. So that's pretty much uh, the VA claims process in general. Uh, VA.gov, your best friend. Now, let's go ahead and we'll pop over to pop over to the National Archives. Now, this is going to be another one of your best friends at the National Archives. You can actually go to your veteran service records, click there. Guess what? Anything that you did while you were in the service, it's there. And if it's not there and you don't have paper copies, probably get destroyed in the fire, which means you're gonna have to go see the doctor. You're gonna have to go find additional ways to find a way to get a disability because it probably happened to you in the service. The service is very hard on your body, very hard on your mind. So it's, it's not, not a very easy thing to go through. And it, it affects a lot of veterans. A lot of veterans don't take advantage of the benefits that they definitely deserve after their service. So this is your very first step. If you don't have those medical records, if you don't have your DD-214, and if you're looking to apply for a disability finally, and I highly, highly recommend that. Definitely do that. I've helped multiple veterans just through advice because I can't legally help you with your disability claim because I'm not a qualified VA 
VA representative either, but we got to help each other. So it's a matter of looking at those individual disabilities that you have that you can go ahead and file based on your service, based on your medical packets, and based on things that other people around you have said that you might have and can provide evidence, both medical and buddy letters, in order to file a claim and then let the VA say no, because they'll take forever on it, but who knows? They might very well say yes. And then that's just one more thing to add to your paycheck to allow that additional passive income to come in, and that'll allow you to go ahead, reinvest, and buy more of your time back. And that's just what we're trying to do here on this channel is just show you how I'm doing it so that you can follow the steps so that you can go ahead and be guided in the right directions to get exactly what you need out of life, which is more time with the people you love, more time doing the things that you want to do. And well, that's uh, episode three. So we'll go ahead and cut it here. And if you guys want more of this content, go ahead and like, subscribe, go ahead, leave comments. Let me know what disabilities you want me to cover. I have quite a number of them. Obviously, there's some that I won't have a ton of knowledge on just because I don't have direct experience with it, but I can definitely help you. There is a ton of benefits out there for veterans who even get a 10% disability rating. If you get one service-related disability rating, it'll set you up for success. There's just so many benefits out there and you need to take advantage of them. So we'll go ahead and cut it here. Um, look forward to doing episode four and I'll catch you later. Bye. Getting on the flow.